So here it is, my first kit card. Although it's really more of like a kit A11. It's pretty big. So I'm gonna spend the next several minutes cutting off all of the individual pieces and cleaning them up, getting the little um, connector traces off of there. If you have a, an X-Acto knife like this, these are really handy. I'll show you a little shortcut to separating these parts off of here. Basically, you can just shear them off right where they connect with the traces. Probably, my hand's probably in the way. But yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, so that took about nine minutes. Uh, it was easier than I thought it would be, and I ins got to inspect all the parts and everything seems to be to, sp to spec. And this is kind of fun. You get a free little mini stencil <laughs> included with the kit. Okay, so now all that's left is to put it together. So these are probably the key stone of the build. They're basically the main support pillars. Oops, looks like I missed something here. All right. And uh, these have two main parts that attach. These are the basically the feet, and those go on the side that has um, these two, and this part goes on the top. So. Should just be able to snap this in here like that nice and solid there okay and I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do since there's so much redundancy in this model I'm just going to put all of the redundant components together at the same time just because it will be more efficient overall to build that way all right um so the next step would probably be to work with the secondary supports, which are pretty much just a smaller version of these, only with, with only two holes instead of three. And these also have little feet. And the nice thing about this is the way I designed almost all the components, they're pretty much symmetrical, so you can't really screw up how you put them together, which is perfect for, for someone like me who tends to easily get things confused thanks to my four-dimensional dyslexia. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so those are complete and now I might as well put the um, caps on the ends of as well. And hopefully the tolerances are right on this because there's a little bit of warping in the first two versions of this that I did. I tried to correct for that, and it looks like looks like I'm more or less got it. So that's good. does require a little bit of pressure to snap those on, but that's good because I really wanted the model to stay in one piece after it's finished. Okay. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky because these parts are a little bit sophisticated. Um, if you look closely, you'll see there's little key notches on here and those are to limit the direction um, and depth that you can insert them into the su main supports. There's also a notch up here that basically um, lets you put the little wedges in properly. Um, essentially how this works is <clears throat> It's really hard to see the direction of this, but one side's flat and the other side is slanted. And the flat side is the side that you're going to be inserting. So basically, you're pushing all the way through until 
you got you hit that first little bump and then these wedges this is like traditional Japan, Japanese joinery. They slide into the slot there and then they fall down into this little impression which locks them into place. And you need to put two on each side. And they have a very clear directionality. They have little uh, sort of like steps on the top. That's actually the filament. I put this one upside down. That's actually the filament layers but it works as a really nice kind of like ratcheting mechanism that creates like an incredibly stable bond. So yeah, that like locks right in there. I don't know if you can see the little gaps and the little key that those slip into, but yeah, that, that holds them in place. Um, okay, so there's two of those for each of these main supports. And same, same situation. It's and this notch always goes at the top. So I'm just gonna lock these in while I have the chance here. Hopefully, this is relaxing more than than boring. Okay, so that's one down. And now I'm going to do the other. <clears throat> I'm just going to edit this out. All right, so those two main supports are done. And then I did, I forgot about this little detail here. I think this is my favorite piece out of the whole build just because of how perfectly the filament um, idiosyncrasies worked with this, the way it created the layers and concentric rings and the way the um, warping of the model of the filament due to the temperature fluctuations actually gave the edges or the tips a little upturn, just like the real thing, just something I was too lazy to model into the actual topology. So yeah, these are just the little caps that go on the end of these piers. And there's four of those. So far, I'm really happy with how all these pieces are fitting together because they're easy, more or less easy to snap, and I don't feel like any of them are going to just come apart. Okay, so now basically the next stage is just um, connecting all these peer sets um, and there's there's different orientations that you could use but um, and once again there's the little notch notches there that make it so you can only push them in so far that's just a guiding principle there and on this on these there's really subtle um, Hopefully this will focus. Come on, focus. Focus. There's a really subtle little notch there that, <laughs> it's not focusing, but anyway, that lets you know how deeply to insert the, the post, like right to those little notches. And then that's symmetry. Okay. So same thing on this other one. I'm going to edit that out. All right, the two piers are completely finished, and uh, so now we get to work on the main cross beam and the top, and this is also key framed or keyed so that it has precision positioning and locking, and then this, this little thing is fun, that little nipple there, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but essentially these slide in through here, and then once again, the little um, wedges are used to secure secure this main cross beam. Wow. All right, I'm just gonna do this off camera. All right, so that was actually the most challenging part of the whole construction pro process so far, but it's not too difficult. So then the last step really is just putting on the top 
is this is a very straightforward piece here. Once again, symmetrical, so you can't really fuck it up. Those two pieces clip together. And then if you want to do it perfectly, you got to take this little piece, the final piece really, the placard, and that um, snaps onto the center of the top like that. And then it fits into this little nipple here when you put the final piece at the top onto the build. hammer to knock that down it's pretty strong damn <laughs> there we go probably gonna use some pliers to get those fully seated there it's hard to see but there's like a millimeter gap might actually cinch those tolerances up just a little bit in the very final version of the model. I mean, this gap isn't a big deal, but I'm a perfectionist. So, yeah, there you have it. The quintessential, venerable, ever mystical, and magnificent Japanese Tori Arch kit card. <laughs> which can take a beating so this is going to go up on my printables pretty soon and uh, you can print one out for yourself as always uh, I would really appreciate your support I have a, a coffee uh, it'll be in the description and uh, I have a paypal too if that's more convenient just, uh, you know, send me whatever you think your enjoyment of assembly and and uh, just fun, the fun of the model and the kit card. And, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching, guys.